Hello, Zelda adventurers. I'm Seth of Hyrule, and we're back again to do an un... That we need to go investigate. It's, it's the moon. <laughs> Hello Zelda adventurers, I'm back again and this time we're going to be unboxing Majora's Mask Link. First we got to get him out of this package though. <gasps> Alright, so here we go with the unboxing. Let's go ahead and get this open. There's tape on it. And we can't get through tape, it's magically sealed. Link, <laughs> we need to use the Master Sword. <laughs> yes, we need it. Give me the Master Sword. Give me the Master Sword. Let go. Ow! Bit me. Link, look, it's the Triforce. <laughs> yes. Look at some Oh my goodness. Oh, this is really cool. Here we go. First look at the box. Let's go ahead and get it out here. Nice little. Don't remind me, Ami. Thank you for shopping with us. All oh, right, so here's our first look at the packaging for this guy. He is super cool. I just love Young Link from Majora's Mask. Like, Majora's Mask is such an awesome game, and it's great to be getting this kind of figure for him. As far as the packaging, I love the purple. It kind of looks pink. It's pinky purple. Whatever, it's cool. There's a lot of cool accessories here, and he is 553 Nendoroid Link Majora's Mask version. So, all in all, this guy cost me around $50 for everything, including shipping and all that, and I had him pre-ordered for almost a whole year before he came out. So, I've been waiting a long time to do this unboxing, but I'm so glad it's finally here. So, let's go ahead and open him up. <laughs> Now that we're getting another look at it, we can see even more accessories here. You can see the Majora's mask back there. It's gonna be really cool, the bunny hood, and then his different arms and legs. So back in here just has these little poppy pegs. Gotta pop them out like this. Mm, yeah. Oh man, this is him. He is precious. I honestly think I might like him more than the Toon Link figure. I gotta get the packaging off. There we go. Just put the head back on. For the Nendoroid, all the joints are detachable. So you just kind of swivel them. You just kind of rock it into place there. That's one thing I love about Good Smile Company is that their joints are always awesome. Like, it's, they're always good. It's very solid plastic. All right, now we're gonna get this piece here. There we go, put it back together. All right, so I think we're gonna start on the review of Young Link himself, and then we're gonna move on to his accessories. So let's go ahead and do that first. <laughs> All right, so we got the lovely little Link here. He's looking beautiful. I mean, just like, yeah! He's a little rock star in the figure world. We got the beautiful paint detail here. It fades from like this dark orange color to yellow on the side of the hair. Very awesome eye printing. We get the gold belt buckles and it looks like the paint detail on that is awesome. You can see a little bit of overlap right there on the side. I'm just as a side note, and I'm sure that's just specific to like one I got. The paint detail is always impressive. I love the mold itself. We have the cool like crumpling of the hat here. You can see the creases in it as well as the seam. Everything is just very accurately colored. I'm very happy with this figure so far. Also, as far as the materials go, everything is that hard plastic except for this tunic piece right here. And that's a malleable rubber. It's just got a little stretch to it. So good for, for posing and for those high jumps. All right, so this this figure has a lot of cool accessories. Let's check them out. 
All right, so we got Link chilling out back there. He's just gonna hang out while we look at all of these accessories. Wow, okay, a lot of these accessories fell out. All right, so let's get looking at all these accessories here. I'm gonna start with my personal favorite of the bunch, and that's Tattle. With all the collectible Zelda figures that have come out, we haven't actually gotten a figure fairy yet. So getting her in the set is so cool. The wings are cool. They're actually a transparent clear, but they have like a cloudy white painted over them, and then her body is transparent yellow. It's like barely transparent. Next item is one I'm sure everyone's excited to see. That is the Majora's Mask. This piece is very cool. The paint is very good on it. Mine has a scratch. I think it must have been the way it was packaged, if you can see right there. It's got a scratch on it, but uh, not too bad. One thing I noticed about it is the mask itself is a thin, hard plastic. It would have been cool if they kind of like made the back a little more polished, but uh, it's cool. Very cool piece. Next we have the bunny hood. Link's iconic hood helps him run really fast. Or if we're talking about Ocarina of Time, you know, the running man on Hyrule Field who runs all around. That's the bunny hood here. It's also made out of this plastic, but it seems like this plastic's a little bit thicker more durable. The ears aren't bending or anything, so it seems like a good tough piece here. Next piece we're looking at here is Link's Hylian Shield in Majora's Mask. This piece specifically has awesome paint detail. And out of all the shield designs here, I think this design is my favorite. Um, we got the accurate design to Majora's Mask, everything there, the studs, blue paint inside the circles here. The print is perfect. And then we flip this over and we get the awesome inside shield detail as well. Actual carved, that's not print there. Of the wood planks. You get the handle itself, which is also an opposable ball joint. So you can angle the shield however you want to when he's holding it. So this piece is fantastic. Next, we got the sword right here. Got shiny metallic. Everything's accurately colored. Very tiny little sword here. Sheath as well is very awesome. All the right detail on it. It also has a peg hole straight through the back there. Interesting that it goes all the way through. Usually it's just a peg on one side. And we got the peg so we can put the sword away in the sheath. Next we got my other favorite out of this set. It is the red potion in a bottle. It's so cool how it's transparent. You can see how cool it looks. See it's got this peg hole right here so he can hold it in his hand. This piece just looks fantastic. Then we have the masks. We got the Zora mask and you can see there's little holes in the front of the masks so he can hold them in his hand. So that's kind of fun. There's what the back of the mask look like. These are really nice solid pieces here. Here we have the Deku mask which is my personal favorite. Favorite. And here is the Goron mask. Also a very fun piece. All the images on these masks are a flat print. Like there's no embossing or anything like that on them. The other pieces we have here is Link's alternate face, which is an angry yelling face. Probably good for attacking. Very similar to what we see on the other Zelda figures. And we have this alternate leg here. We got fist hand to hold the sword. We have this hand that has the peg in it. Another alternate hand here with the wrist pointed down so he can hold his sword outward. I guess this one would be the shield hand. And it looks like this piece here is specifically for him to hold the mask. You can see the peg there where he would hold the mask in his hand. All right, and this Nendoroid Link does include the basic stand that has been included with all the other ones so far up to this point. Fully posable stand there, replaceable good smile joint here, and then we got the smaller peg to hold up an item. This piece here, which I think is gonna be used to prop up the mask. And then this base here. All right, we're gonna do some posability. Let's check, we got the ball joint here on the neck. We can look up about that far. We can look down that far. And we got looking right, looking left, you know, all the way around. And as for the arms, they just go up and down but that's why he includes alternate arms. He's just a single peg there that rotates. So phew. in the inner area here, his hand rotates from the sleeve. They so got this piece here, it rotates. Yeah. So uh, same thing for the other arm. And then we have the waist that turns. The legs, see, we got those ball joints in there. And they're the same ball joints that are used for the neck. And see if we take off this leg here and work it out. See, that's just a basic good smile joint there. And that's why it comes with a replacement. So we get that forward, we get the pivoting from here, and then you can also rotate that leg. Make his legs look really broken. Just 
Uh, yeah, that's fun. His other leg is the same thing. The only complaint I might have here is this weird little seam that's showing up right there on the side of the tunic. Like, it's just, it just looks like a crease in the plastic. It's fine on this side. But that's definitely worth pointing out. I think the only thing left to do with our hero of Termina is play with some of his accessories. Let's try out some of his arms, different faces, and have some fun with it. <laughs> There we go, just gonna take off the arm piece there, gonna put that in there, this arm right here. There we go, and I'm gonna take off this hand here, I'm going to be quick, and that hand. I'm also gonna put him on the Nendoroid stand real quick, so that the stand just plugs in like that, you know, there, and then just the peg in the back. There we go. So yeah, the handle just attaches from the blade and hilt of the sword like that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put it in his hands. Just do like that, and then we just connect him to the peg. There we go. That's for the shield, we're just gonna put it in there like that. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. As for some of the other stuff, it looks like the bunny hood just clips on over the hat like that. Alright, so what you're gonna do to get the Majora's Mask on his head, you actually take this unique piece right here, and then you're gonna put it inside his hair pieces to match up the two pegs on the inside of the hair. And one is bigger than the other. There we go, that's why I couldn't get it. There's a size difference between the two pegs. So once we get this peg in there, see that? It's that peg sticking out. So we're gonna put that hair piece back on Link, just like that. Now he's got that peg sticking off his head. And now you can put the Majora's Mask on his head. And there you go. He is now possessed by Majora. <laughs> So this arm here is actually fixed inside the sleeve. You can't take it out like you can with the other ones, but it's made for holding this mask here. So let's try that out and then the bottle arm. So I'm just gonna show you guys one of the masks here. The mask goes on the peg like this, and then Link goes on like that. See, and now it's like he's putting the mask on. As for the potion hand, it's like the same thing here. We got the peg, we got the peg hole, put them together, there you go. Okay, right, so there we go, just putting those two together and back on the arm with you. One last thing I want to do here is set up Tattle. She's got a special little stand of her own. So let's go ahead and set her up real quick. Just one last thing. All right, so here we have Tattle. And then this little peg here goes right in the back of there. And then this part is posable. And then this little ball peg here is gonna go right in there. See, now we got Tattle flying around right next to Link. See how the peg is extra long on the back peg? That's because you're actually supposed to fit the sheath between that and his back. That way he can hold the sheath. Let's just set that up on his back real quick. So after detaching this hilt piece here, we actually put it right back on and then we pull off the blade of the sword. And then we just take the sheath and we put the pegs together. It just goes in like that. There we go. See, look at that. Now the sword's put away. And then you would just fit that onto the back peg here. You can't really hold the sheath on his back unless he's using the stand. That's kind of a bummer. So there we go. It just goes on there like that. Oops, we go this way. And then we just go ahead and put Link on that peg there. And there we go. Awesome. He's looking so much cooler with all his accessories attached. Like, that's pretty cool. I like that they made it so Link can wear the Majora's mask. And I think it's really clever how they made the pegs work for him to wear the mask, because even though you don't wear the mask in the game, I think it's pretty cool that he gets to wear it as a figure. All right, last thing we're gonna do today is do a little size comparison. So here he is in comparison to Toon Link. They are the same size. Here's Figma Link. <laughs> He, of course, is taller than them. And then if we were gonna get real technical, we could size compare him to one of the really old Majora's Mask figures. He's really short. Anyways, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm currently working on something pretty big for my YouTube channel. It's gonna be Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes Adventures. It's gonna be a CG animated, cell-shaded cartoon that me and my friends are gonna be voicing. So I hope you guys look forward to that. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I've been working on it for over a year now. I'm excited about this. As always guys, you can email me at 
zethofhyrule at gmail.com. Go ahead and email me there if you got a message or something like that, or you had a suggestion, or really just anything to say. And I'll try to get back to you as best as I can. I hope you look forward to more unboxings I'm gonna be doing. Your support means so much to me. And yeah, share it with your friends. Leave a comment, subscribe, or don't subscribe. It's up to you. Anyways, thanks a bunch for watching. Uh, guys, have an awesome day. Bye.